हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू द वीडियो लेक्चर्स ऑन स्ट्रोक्स थियरम आई एम प्रोफेसर मयूर गोहिल इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर आई एम टेकिंग अप द फॉलोइंग क्वेश्चन टू वेरीफाई स्ट्रोक्स थियरम वेयर दिस इज द वेक्टर फील्ड गिवन टू अस ओके एंड वी आर एंड द सरफेस ओवर यर इज टू एक्स प्लस वाई प्लस जेड इक्वल टू टू विच इज इन द फर्स्ट ऑक्टेंट now what does it mean to verify stokes theorem so let us see how to solve such kind of question now first thing we write here to verify stokes theorem means to verify that the line integral that we have f bar dot dr over the closed curve c is equivalent to the double integral of curl f bar dot n hat ds over the surface s this is what we have to verify now in this verification there are many aspects are there to this question so let us see one by one and solve them in this solving Uh, of stokes theorem the lhs that we see the line integral it is slightly lengthy in process and the double integral it is component by component if we can solve then it is a uh, very straight forward but what we need to remember here that uh, we have to set up the double integral so that can be a trick uh you know it can be a trickster for some of you if you are not uh, well aware of double integration but for that i have my double integration lecture series you can check out in the uh, i icon up you can check there and uh, you can watch those videos to get hold of the concept of double integration let us move on to solving of this question the first thing that we need to do first is we understand the field the vector field f bar okay the step number 1 is we write the field so f bar is equal to x plus y then it is y plus z and minus of x now why i write only the component of i j k the reason is that we don't need i j k all the time we just write it in a tuple notation okay so here these are called f1 f2 f3 okay now from these we can first thing what we can calculate from the stokes theorem is curl f so curl f bar that is del cross f and that can be calculated using the following formula i j k and that is daba by daba x daba by daba y daba by daba z f1 f2 f3 okay now this uh, we calculate here so let us see what is the answer for this i j k daba by daba x daba by daba y daba by daba z uh, the answer here for f1 is x plus y y plus z for f2 and minus of x for f3 now let us calculate the answer so we calculate the determinant and operate the partial derivatives we see that it is zero here it is minus 1 that is i component then minus of j times okay that is going to be minus 1 minus 0 j hat and the k component is going to be zero minus 1 k hat okay so this vector is basically minus of i hat plus of j hat minus of k hat now this is going to be basically 
minus 1 comma 1 comma minus 1 as a vector so this is called f bar so I'll keep I label this as our first important thing that we want now we take the surface first so surface is 2x plus y plus z equal to 2 okay here I have already uh, kept the answer here ready for the final uh, question the whatever answer we are going to get it is minus 2 so that I I also benefit and you also benefit that if you know how to calculate the above question you well and good you can verify your answer but here I am showing how to get to the answer so surface is this now this surface what we do is we write it as z is equals to 2 minus 2x minus y after writing this surface we write the formula for normal therefore normal n bar is minus of daba z by daba x minus daba z by daba y comma 1 now this normal when we take we calculate the answers here therefore n n bar is going to be here it is going to be 2 here it is going to be 1 and 1 so this is n bar now we have a curl a curl dot n bar ds n hat ds right so we basically are going to calculate here n hat is a unit normal but and we have just taken a, a regular normal but see the answer is going to match the reason is the because of this formula the formula for normal over here in Stokes theorem this is much useful so we use this formula directly and we just mention here that curl f bar dot n hat is equal to curl f bar dot n bar for our formula n bar what we have calculated so here what we are going to get the curl was minus 1 1 minus 1 okay and here this is the normal that we got so I label this as 2 this normal that we have got is 2 1 1 when we take the dot product here we get minus 2 plus 1 minus 1 which is minus 2 is the answer okay so this is what we have got now in order to calculate the double integral we will need the limits and the diagram so let us understand them carefully and then proceed so this is the first part calculating curl f bar calculation of normal and calculation of curl f bar dot n hat okay so these are the three portions in the first steps that we will need to calculate if we start with the double integration portion okay so that is what we have got now let us draw the diagram and understand the first diagram that we will need is of the uh, 3d surface that we will need to make so let us see here 2x plus y plus z equals to 2 so if we put z x and y 0 we get z equal to 2 so here z is equal to 2 so this is the point let's say I'll call it a here and it is 0 comma 0 comma 2 okay now the next point is when you put y and z equals to 0 you get x equal to 1 so if I call this as 1 so let's say call it B this is 1 comma 0 comma 0 and let's join them this is a point that we have the next point that is there 
if you put x and z equals to 0 in the equation of the plane we will get y equal to 2 so so if this is one year somewhere then here there will be 2 and here we will let's draw this like this okay it was a straight line just consider it yeah so here there will be a point C uh, we will call that point as 0 comma 2 comma 0 so this is y axis this is z axis and this is x axis and here there will be origin now this is the octant uh, this is in the first octant and this is the figure that we have now here we are going to have the closed contour mentioned that is there and the surface is this ABC is the surface okay so let me write down here here ABC is the surface and the closed contour closed contour is a b c a okay that is the closed contour now uh, we will have to take it in anti clockwise direction so let us take this here properly so this will be from B to C, C to A and A to B. This is how it will go. Now there will be one more thing that we will need the projection of the same on XY plane because we have to write the double integral limits. That is what we were working for. So the double uh, the projection on XY plane will be like this. Let me write here projection on XY plane will be we have x axis and y axis and here will be the line and the point that it will cut is going to be 1 comma 0 and here it will be 0 comma 2 so these are basically the same points b and c but these are in two dimension the the left diagram that you see is in three dimension that's it so here I'll just keep them B and C and I label the line that you see the line BC the equation of the line BC is going to be it's going to be 2x plus y equal to 2 you just have to delete the z component or the z variable from it you will get the answer so and the shaded region of integration will be this one okay here we will have origin so the region of integration is o b c o okay so that is the region over which we will be integrating now let us see how to integrate it therefore double integral curl f bar dot n hat ds over s is going to be the double integral curl f bar dot n hat we calculated it is minus 2 and now if you have seen my video lectures on double integration I had already discussed what is type 1 and type 2 region so this region on projection on XY plane that you see is both type 1 as well as type 2 region so what I can do I can write here I can write dy dx and now when I want to find the limits over here I draw a vertical line passing through the region it enters at x axis so at x is the equation line is y equal to uh, equation of this line of x axis is y equals to 0 so the lower limit will be 
y equal to 0 and the upper limit if we see it is exiting at the point on the line BC so any point on line BC is of the form y equal to 2 minus 2x so the upper limit is going to be y equal to 2 minus 2x and the projection is on the x-axis so the OB is the projection so x is equal to 0 and here x is equal to 1 so these are the limits now uh, here this was the RHS so I'll just label this as RHS equal to now let us simplify the RHS and let us see if we get the answer as minus 2 so RHS here on simplification what we get is 0 to 1 okay and then uh, here we have 0 to 2 minus 2x minus 2 dy dx so minus 2 comes out integration from 0 to 1 integration 0 to 2 minus 2x dy dx when we integrate this we get minus 2 integral 0 to 1 now see why it's just uh, no variable is there so the answer is going to be upper limit minus lower limit so 2 minus 2x dx is the term that you will get and here there is minus 2 multiplied by the integration of this so 2x minus x square 0 to 1 so here it is going to be minus 2 into 2 minus 1 answer is minus 2 as I have already said that minus 2 is the answer so therefore we have got the answer for double integral over s curl f bar dot n hat ds answer is minus 2 okay so this is what is required now we will go for solving of the LHS now LHS that we have seen let us go for that now for that we will need the diagram the 3D diagram that we have drawn so let us take that and proceed now we calculate the LHS the LHS of Stokes theorem said that it is LHS is integral C F bar dot dr bar okay this is the integral and where C the closed curve that is there it is a b c we had written now this closed curve is going to split up over the it as follows it is going to split up like this from b c then it will go from c a then it will go from a to b these are the three integrals i1 i2 i3 okay and they are integrated over f bar dot dr now let us see how to calculate each of the component in it so first consider consider f bar dot dr bar what is f bar dot dr bar that is going to be it is f1 f2 f3 dot dx dy dz now when we multiply this or do the dot product over here we get f1 dx plus f2 dy plus f3 dz 
so we substitute the values of f1 f2 f3 here so f1 is x plus y dx f2 is y plus z dy and uh, f3 is minus of x dz okay this is what we have so i'll call this uh, here by the name capital star or we'll put a star over here uh, okay rather than giving an alphabet we'll put a star now in this star equation we will keep on referring it again and again so that we will get our answer easily we have to calculate now i1 i2 i3 so let us see what happens for i1 for i1 equation of bc is required right now equation of bc what we can do see it is as such we are on the plane but we have to we want to find the equation of the line bc so what will happen here we don't want the z component but we are on the plane so what we will say the z component z is equal to 0 and the equation of the line the moment we put z equals to 0 the plane equation converts to 2x plus y equal to 2 now from this we calculate the uh, dz dy and dx so let us see how to calculate so when when z is equals to 0 automatically dz is 0 ok so we have got one part now so when 2x plus y is equal to 2 we get 2 plus dy by dx is equals to 0 which implies dy is minus of 2 dx ok so this is what we have got and there is one more thing we can see also it is y is equals to 2 minus 2x this is what we can get now let us write the integral i1 for i1 equal to integral f dot dr over the curve bc we will get now see we have got x plus y dx so here we will have from the star equation we have x plus y dx and y plus z dy z is z component is 0 so x plus y now instead of y we will write 2 minus 2x as we have just got from the conclusion here okay so it is 2 minus 2x dx plus and then what else is there for y y we are going to write 2 minus 2x and dy we have already claimed it is minus of 2 dx right so that is minus 2 dx and now if we see entire i1 has got converted to single variable x so we will write the limits of x so limits of x are going from 1 to 0 ok limits of x are going from 1 to 0 in this case let us write down this equation therefore x is going from 1 to 0 ok it is clearly visible 
in equation of BC, if, even if we see the coordinates over here, x is starting from 1 and here x has become 0. So that is how you can straightforward write the limits of x. Now let us simplify this i1 we get integral x equal to 1 to 0 now on simplification what do we get let us see it is x plus 2 minus 2x then there is minus of 4 plus of 4x dx now this gives us integration from 1 to 0 we have 3x minus 2 okay dx on integration we will get the answer as half for this so i1 answer we have got which is half now similarly we will calculate for the integral i2 let us go for that so for i2 i2 is the integral over here we will take it from integral c to c a to uh, over f bar dot dr bar. Now when we do this integral we have to be slightly careful because the equation is going to change and we are not going to have the x component over here. So first we write equation of C A equation of C A is x equal to 0 and y plus z is equal to 2 ok so this means therefore dx is equals to 0 and we will have dy plus dz is equals to 0 which implies dy is minus dz ok so let us see how to handle it so for i2 which is integral c a f bar dot dr bar so we don't have the x component there so all the terms of dx and all they will vanish so here it is integral y plus z now y plus z here this means y is equals to 2 minus of z okay so in the second component here y will be replaced by 2 minus z plus z dy has become minus dz then x component is 0 so the third component of dz will vanish so the limits of z in this case are z is going from if we see the component over here c here it is c is going from z is in c co coordinate it is 0 and in a coordinate z is 2 so it is z is equal to 0 to z equal to 2 is the limit so let us calculate this limit so it is going to be 0 to 2 ok so it is 2 times minus of dz and here we will get the answer as minus 2 into 2 so answer is minus of 4 this is the answer now same way we calculate for i3 so for i3 we will have integral 
it is from a to b okay f bar dot dr so here it is going to be integral now f bar dot dr a b when we are going to integrate now y component will not be there so that is what we have to understand so equation so we write here equation of a b is going to be 2x plus z is equals to 2 and y is equal to 0 so this means z is equals to 2 minus 2x and y is equals to 0 so dz is equals to minus of 2 dx and dy is equal to 0 okay having got this components let us write down the integral therefore i3 equal to integral now the terms of dx will remain dz will remain dy terms will vanish because dy is 0 so in f bar dot dr we will write only these many terms x plus y now if we see y over here in the field y is 0 so value is 0 okay dx now dx is going to remain dx as it is dy terms are gone so that is 0 plus now for dz we will have minus of x so here we will have minus of x times dz is minus 2 dx and the limits of x in this case are going from a to b so a in a the coordinate of a is 0 and coordinate of b is 1 the x coordinate so answer is going to go from 0 to x equal to 1 are the limits over here so here we will have i3 equal to 0 to 1 x plus 2x dx and this is 3x right so when we integrate this we will get 3x square by 2 from 0 to 1 and answer is 3 by 2 so our final answer for LHS that we were solving that will be i1 plus i2 plus i3 our i1 answer that we got was half i2 answer we have already seen it is minus of 4 and for i3 we have got 3 by 2 okay and so the final answer on addition we get minus 2 and hence we are done with the verification of LHS and RHS so therefore we write here therefore we have got LHS which was integral f bar dot dr which is minus 2 and finally we come to the conclusion that LHS is equal to RHS therefore over here we get c f bar dot dr is equivalent to or it is equal to curl f bar dot n hat ds okay hence we can now write that hence stokes theorem is verified okay it was a very lengthy sum to understand but yes it has many many factors inside it which will help you to go through the entire procedure it strengthens your double integration it strengthens your concept of line integration 
okay and all the minor nuances are there in this question how to calculate norm how to calculate the curl f bar normal every concept is taken care in this question so let me uh, take you back to the entire process and once we are through it we will conclude it so here we have seen how to start with the verification the first step we took was we calcul uh, we wrote the statement what we want to verify so there was an LHS and there was an RHS each time RHS is very easy to solve okay unless the diagram is very easy or something uh, RHS the curl F bar and N hat it's very easy calculate curl F bar curl F bar once you get it N bar you calculate it easily you get the answer okay so you calculate the first three curl F bar normal and the dot product once you calculate that you set up the double integral setting up the double integral you get your answer over here okay so this is how we had done the setting of double integration okay and here at the corner you can see top uh, at the bottom right corner you can see the answer that we have got is minus 2 okay after that we write go for calculation of LHS for calculation of LHS we first understand the contour what is the contour the closed curve that closed curve over here in our case was that boundary over here the ABC boundary of the plane that we see that is formed here it is BC CA and AB each time we would need f bar dot dr so we have separately calculated it for ease of convenience and for solving purpose now we calculate for i1 for i1 we see the equation equation once formed we calculate dz dy dx and we find if any relationships are there we got this relationship we substitute in the that i1 and we get our answer for i1 after that same process is done for i2 and i3 okay here is the process for i2 on the left side that you see and this is the answer for i2 this is the answer for i3 and final answer for LHS is here so once we get i1 i2 i3 we add the answer for LHS and we get our final answer this is how it is done okay now and finally the conclusion that LHS is RHS hence Stokes theorem is verified now with this very lengthy question or the lengthy answer what I would like to tell you for most of the examination they don't ask verification what do they ask is that using Stokes theorem using Stokes theorem find the value of f bar dot dr bar and etc etc conditions will be given so if such a question is asked okay using Stokes theorem find the value etc etc and the line integral over here is given to you then what is expected from you from you as a student is that you calculate and give the double integral curl f bar dot n hat ds you calculate this and give it to them in the exam otherwise if they ask you that using Stokes theorem find or evaluate double integral f bar dot n hat ds 
over s if this is s that means it is curl of f dot n hat ds and uh, something something is given then what you are expected to calculate is you are expected to calculate and give the line integral f bar dot dr this is what is to be calculated so i have shown both the sides lhs as well as rhs how to calculate it i hope you have followed this it was a very lengthy example please hit like button i hope you liked it never mind but do like the uh, video so that i can give you more different examples on the same topic please share it with your friends those who find it useful um please subscribe to my channel i would be very happy to guide you if you have any difficulty please do comment down your difficulties over there and in the comment section and uh, feel free to ask your doubts till then keep solving good amount of mathematics i shall soon see you with another example on stokes theorem thank you